So what's the story on this thing? So probably six, seven years ago, uh, the carburetor and just started leaking gas a lot. I took it in, have it fixed a few times, mm -hmm. and never really got it all the way done. And we used it off and on probably up till about three years ago. And Did you replace it with a newer, nicer? What a what a UTV side okay. by side, a little easier to get. What in brand? Now. Uh, got a Cub Cadet. Cub Cadet, okay. Yep. Challenger 750? Yep. Seven, yeah. Well, 700. 700, okay. Yeah, so, anyway, this we use this off and on to really drag food pots and stuff. Okay. And after we bought that, uh, just kind of sat it out here. And really, it's probably been here two and a half years. Okay. I would tell you, I just came out here, only one tire was low. Really? So, uh, which surprised me. I thought they would all be low. But yeah, the tires are in great condition yeah. for the age. So... Well, thank you. I can get this up there easily. Like you've done it before. Yep. Done a couple times with mowers mainly. That's what I've been really good at. work smarter all right guys we just got home with this thing I don't know much about it other than he said like you heard in the video he said he was running it and then it was leaking fuel all of a sudden not too much information with it looks like it does have an oil cooler up there a the oil cooler for it it is two-wheel drive only, not four-wheel. Bummer. Oh, well, still free, so really, really can't beat that. 350cc Ford reverse. It's basically, yeah, five-speed with a high, low, and reverse. I haven't even pulled over this engine. Ugh, sorry guys, I'm shaking a bit. Not seized, which is good. I don't even really wanna know about the fuel. But. Animals. Well, it looks like a little bit. Nothing crazy. Sorry, I'm trying to film and walk around my trailer is kind of hard. So that's the battery. It really doesn't look like much is holding it on. What's in here? Ooh. Looks like paper towels, trailer ball, something. Got a couple other things in here. Drill bits, tool kit, spark plug, random stuff in there. Put it back that way I'm not messing with moving it god why is this hard ha one-handed but 
overall looks like a pretty little pretty decent little machine i got a title with it and it only has three three thousand miles on it not too The clutch feels stiff. The brake feel okay. Well, that's spongy. It's got like a rifle folder. The rear brake feels okay. Before I forget, I'm gonna put the key back in it. Yeah. Of course, no battery. Let's see, I think we're in neutral. It's got compression. That's good. That carb is definitely junk, though. So we're going to have to take that off and clean it. I don't think I'll have any money in this, really. Because... The people who I bought this from, or who gave me this, were super, super sweet people. Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. Set the parking brake, or I don't know what that is. That might be a clutch stop. Like that. Just spin. Ouch. Nope. So. Won't go in a reverse, but it'll go with high and low. So, all right, I'm just meandering around. I need to stop. How does it smell for tank? Ooh, ooh, that's a good vintage. I don't know if that bottom of the tank is coated in something or if that's just old gas, but it is brown. And I don't, think I don't think there's any fuel in it. Yeah. Wonderful. Seal that back up so I don't get water in my tank. But I'm stoked. I'm happy about it. Got a sweet little ATV for literally no money. Sorry, I'm, I might get distracted. There we go. Like that. Could use a new seat. Definitely needs a battery. Um, I'm probably not going to do anything else tonight. What's well, sitting outside another night. But for right now, I'm done for the night. I'm tired. I want to go see my family. So, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just address the uh, the carburetor because he said it was leaking. Uh, I got to take off anyway. I bought a spare from Amazon because they're cheap. I think this was like 35 bucks or something like that. So we're going to slap that on there and then see how it looks. <clears throat> and based on that, we'll kind of figure out what we need to do afterwards. Because um, I haven't even checked. To be honest, I haven't checked the oil. Fresh, clean oil looks like, which is good. So I really think this thing's gonna come right back to life once I put a, uh, once I put uh, what do you want to call it, a carburetor on it and put some fresh gas in it, it'll be fine. So let me get the right screws and then we'll take this carburetor off in here, and then go from there. All right, turns out it's a six millimeter. I'm doing this because it just will be easier to replace the carburetor rather than the boot. Uh, because the boot right here, I'm concerned about breaking it. And then I'll have to set you up on the other side to get the other side's view. But first things first is get this sides off because 
once you get this bolts off there's really nothing on this side so let's go to the all right let's see if this works i got you kind of just propped up here Ooh, that's a tight squeeze up there it's really freaking tight we're gonna have to get an actual allen key so be right back in the way. Alright, let me get a screwdriver too. Yeah, that was brittle. Alrighty. Okay, it's broken loose. Now I just gotta get it to spin the rest of the way without stripping it out. Yeah, this is a an absolute bugger to get. This is annoying. Absolutely annoying to do this. I wonder if that comes up so easily. No, no, it won't. One side you have plenty of access, the other side you have none. But on the bright side, it's at least coming out. I've dealt with these before, they're absolutely seized. Can I get it with pliers now? Mm. 
I wish I had a ball in socket or er, ball end Allen key for this because that would make my life so much easier. And this is coming out now. There's just no room with this gas tank in the way. You guys do not need to watch me fight this. Feels like it wants to move freely, but it doesn't. <laughs> hey, sorry guys, I know you're not probably able to see so well. I can't either. There we go. Well, I said that, and then immediately it stops moving. If this gas tank wasn't here, it'd be better access. Quarter turn at a time. <laughs> no, that's me. Sorry, ADHD. There's like a little divot there. I wonder if that was a dent or if that's just for like, oh, something else on a different chassis. Oh, yes. There we go. There's the second bolt. And then now I can get a Phillips head and undo this cover.
there's a little brass rod right there. Now, we should be able to slot this out. This way. Oof. Oof. Look at all that dust and crap in there. There we go. That's the old carb. We'll have to we'll have to take this and see how bad the bowl is and stuff and see how the float is. Not a huge fan of the white powdery substance inside there. It's like aluminum oxide or something like that. That's just corrosion. So with that, we'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, let's take a look at this carb. The aftermarket one I bought does not fit my quad. The, uh, I have to reuse the factory intake boot, which is not a big deal, but what's bigger, a bigger deal is the throttle cable would have to get lengthened. And this thing would have to, I'd have to take this guy out and replace it in the other one. And I really don't want to do that, especially since right now I can just go ahead and tell it, take it to Amazon and replace it. Versus if I take that out, I can't replace it at that point because it's been messed with. So for right now, we're just going to go after this one and see if I can get this thing going again. Straight up, it's not in horrible condition. Really isn't. That gasket looks like it could be better. Might have been the failure point. The needle and seat appears to be doing okay. What I need to do is I need to take this pin out. Right here. She ain't wanting to move now. Well, why is that? Someone's been in here. Trying to not damage anything else or break this, so I want a very light tool. A little bit better of a tool. That is not moving. And I do not want to break anything, so I have to be very, very ginger and mindful of it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Get the right tool. So that cap comes off. There's a jet there. It's my needle and seat. We'll just, we're going to leave that guy in, but we're going to take this guy out because I want to clean.
clean him up. Ooh. Dropped him down there. Okay, that's not going to work. Let's take off the top cap and remove the diaphragm up here. So that way I can soak this whole thing in my chem dip for ultrasonic cleaning. Gasket looks okay. Yeah, I don't mind all that soaking. I'd love to get this choke lever out. Good, it does free up. Just because I want to clean that up because it's a little dirty. So I should be able to dunk this whole thing and chem dip. Move the O-ring here. There's no O-ring on this side. Go ahead and move this. That's the that's a pre-filter for the needle and seat. So that'll just make it easier to clean later. Now let's see, will this take this out? I think it's working. Yeah. There's another jet right here. And there's one more jet I noticed in the carb. Okay, I gotta get a different subject for that one. And then we will pull out this gasket. Oof. That's where it's gonna be leaking from. But we'll take this and we'll set it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Let it get all cooked up and nice and clean. Rotate it a couple times and... Come on. Yeah, nasty. Let me get that going and then we'll come back later and finish it off. All right, guys, let's get this thing put back together. So let's first, really quickly, clean that off. Get him shoved back there. And then take the rusty screw and put him right here. I took the battery out while I was waiting and put it on my charger and it's actually taking a charge it looks like so we'll see how well it comes back um, I went ahead and just ordered a new battery because you never know if they will return to life or if they will just somewhat take charge or take a charge so we just went ahead with that jet goes back in all the jets were clear, clean. I think it was the gasket that just failed me. And I went through my stash and I had a spare, surprisingly. Or seriously did not think I would have one, but I did. So we'll put this back together. My 
choke put back in place. It's working good. Now we can put the cap back on it. And I've got one more jet to put in, in the bowl. And I blew the whole carburetor out with a uh, brake clean before doing this just to make sure that it was all clean. Uh, internally, I should say. All the jets and orifices are good. That float's feeling a lot better. I gotta put this back. And I got that jet back. It's just this last jet I'm missing, which is right here. He goes, the bottom of this, where'd my screwdriver? Underneath my lid. Yep. He's put back. The new gasket is on. And it goes just like this. Something's not seating right. I think that orifice needs to be be seated better to have the uh, foot bowl put on. Yep, that was it. That might have been the whole issue because that thing was not set right whenever I took it apart. I did not blow the, I did not clean the outside of this bowl that well. I didn't scrub it. I just kind of was like, clean the inside because I'm, I'm limited on my brake clean. So I got to be sparing. <laughs> that stuff ain't cheap. So. probably don't need to watch me put this thing back in the ATV, but I'm going to do, I think, a time lapse of it, just because it probably isn't a horrible thing to have, because someone might question, well, how'd you get that intake on at the same time as getting the gaskets in? So, that might be what I'm doing, so, let me, uh, Get this picked up a minute and then we will be right back when we're at the ATV. Alrighty, so what you guys are looking at right now is the block. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first put the intake boot on it. And I've actually got to reach over, yeah. And get the other bolt that I put on the other side. Because what this is going to do is this is going to allow me easier access to tighten these bolts. Because before it was a quarter turn at a time with a manual wrench. 
Now I can get my ratchet in there because the carb's not in the way. It'll make it a little bit harder to put the actual thing on, but I think this will be fine. And I think I'll be able to get this. Strip it out with the wrench. <clears throat> oh, sorry guys. Can you see still? Yeah, we'll just leave you at that position. So, first thing I'm going to do is put this back the way it was. here. Now we just got to get this guy slotted in place. Oh man. So now, let's just check it. Good actuation, good function. This cover can go back on. And protect that. And I am planning on power washing the entire unit once I get it running and going. keep bumping the fa plastic fender and you guys are resting up against it I really don't want to take this off my trailer until I get it running just because I don't want to have to have a dead four-wheeler not easy to move around I want it easy I want it convenient for me okay that's in. Next thing is this breather valve, followed by slot this thing up. And so the first thing I'm going to do is get it on this little bumper, and then just push it in like that. And that was a lot easier than taking it off the other way. Phone's going off. I'm going to check the air intake real quick before I put the uh, fuel line on. Because once I put the fuel line on, I'm going to put some fuel in the tank and then we're going to crank it and pull start it and see if it will actually run. I just want to make sure there's no critters in here that could clog up the uh, air box or clog up the engine. 
grab you. Moment the truth. Oof. There have definitely been critters in here. The nice thing is, is I think I can just take all that out and not use it. So we'll leave this open for a moment. I still want to crank it and just hear it run just because it is so close. So close to being able to run. I just want to get it going. And yeah, this is, by the way, the old fuel line. I went looking to see if I have any spare fuel line. I do not. So, I'm just trying to make it do with what we got. At least at the moment. I'll eventually probably go buy some actual fuel line for this thing and go get it right. But for right now, I've got a good filter on there. I need to go... I need to go get um, some fuel, dump it in there. And then I'll set you up and we'll get a little view of a uh, pull start in this thing and see if it runs. So, I'll be back in a bit. Alrighty, let's see if this starts. Um, I've got fuel in the engine, fuel in the carb, chokes on, ignition is on, clutch is pulled in for safety, and I have it in low. Should be, it should be neutral, but I got a ratchet strap on the back in case and a ratchet on the front. I did check, uh, oil is good. Well, that's good enough for me. I'm gonna order me a new air filter and go through that and get it replaced um, and clean out this area so that way the box is all squared away set up but for right now it starts it runs I think my fuel petcock is leaking I kind of planned on that because I bought a replacement one so we'll have to take the tank off but I only put in a little bit of gas With that being said, we will be back in a minute. It'll be a minute for your time. It'll actually be a little bit of day, a couple days maybe, um, until I get that air filter. So we'll see what happens. Get that thing replaced. And get it all squared away. Not what I wanted. I took the petcock out. I just dumped fuel out of the tank onto my trailer. So now, there is no way in hell I'm starting that for a minute. So, we'll be back. Alright, we're going to go ahead and just replace this petcock because I got a new one. Uh, there's the hole. I'm pretty sure that's the right hole. Yep. And then that goes like that. And I just need to get my screwdriver. Okay. 
a kit I bought really nice because it came with two brand new screws, brand new gaskets, brand new pet cock, hose, filter, and everything you need basically. The only thing it didn't have was two, four hose clamps. It only had two, but that's not that big of a deal because I have four hose clamps on my old one. This one that I'm just going to reuse. So it's not too bad. And the hose that they gave me is brand new. It's really nice. It has a new fuel filter with it. Yeah, well, we were set with this. And it was only like seven dollars off Amazon. Alrighty. So fuel flow goes into the carb. I'm gonna put that clamp there. Deck nab it. Come back here. Clamp does not want to go on with that hose. There we go. That's the new clamp, and then I'm going to cut the fuel line. Right there. And put my other clamp on it. And tighten that sucker down. Now, let's add some fuel. Ah! Gas cap was not fully secured. I dripped gasoline all over you. What do you guys think? There's the reserve. Looks pretty clean. Man, I've been a mess with gasoline. But, fuel pet cock should work. I don't see any leaks coming from there, nor do I see any leaks coming from the carb. At least I think I don't see any leaks coming from the carb. Looks pretty good. It's too, uh, how do you say, too wet with gasoline because I spilled it. I'm not risking a backfire um, causing an issue. Plus, I want to empty the, uh, take that garbage out, and I want to use a vacuum for that. So I've got to get that set up. But right now, we are squared away. The carb's sealed back up. It's safe. Not going to catch fire on me. That was my biggest concern I was having was the fact how much gas I spilled, but it's fine.
So I got 3,000 miles on it. It's hard to believe. It's got reverse, got an oil temp sensor, high, low, and I mean, you can see reverse here. I don't know how you get it into reverse. You gotta apply the foot brake to get into reverse. So, other side, you gotta apply it. But, yeah, she starts, she runs. We just gotta get a couple things squared away and ready for, I think a friend of mine's one sit, so I think they're gonna end up with it. Just gotta get a couple things squared and then, well, I think they're gonna pay me just parts for it, just cause uh, pass on the deal. Well, we'll be back in a bit once we're getting it off because I want to really show you guys how clean it comes out to be. I really think this thing's going to clean up nicely. Just because it's got, like the tires are basically brand new. The engine sounds like it runs really good. The carb is just not the greatest at the moment. The seats scrap, but if they want to replace it, they can replace it. And, I mean, it's got spare parts or the spare tool toolkit on it. Yeah. It's turned out pretty good for a little free ATV. Can't complain at all. I'm stoked about it. So, with that being said, I'm going to put you guys down and go finish up a couple things and then come back in a bit. All right. Later. Alrighty. Look. Look at this. Just falling apart. Oh my gosh. That poor little thing. Hopefully there's no rodents in here. And they've evacuated. That's nasty. That's real nasty, guys. Oh. All right, let's put this back that way. It has some sort of air filtration to it. And then what we'll do so it doesn't have a whole lot of crap go into it. We're going to put this on right here, back on and just loosely seal it with the screws. I also figured out why it wasn't running the greatest, absolute greatest. Uh, it's because I forgot to tighten the bolt on the other side of the carb. So it was sucking in extra air and not getting enough fuel, which is why it was running poorly. But now, I think I should be able to set this on here. And then undo it and drive this thing off the trailer. Um, I'm really tempted to just drive it off and not even put my ramps on because I don't want to put them on. But. We'll get it set up and then undone and you guys can watch me drive it off. All right. This is either going to end really poorly or it's going to somewhat work. We'll see.
That was a little sketchier than I thought, but it worked. I got it off without taking my ramps out. So, next thing to do is it runs, it drives, it idles. The, the idle's high because of the choke. Um, next thing to do is clean up my trailer, get it put back, and then I can actually go and uh, power wash this thing, get it nice and clean, and then we're set for the for the project. Because I don't think I need to go through it anymore because my buddy, I think, wants it. So, we'll be back in a bit. Alright. I put the battery back in. I know it's good. I tested it. Fires right up. Time to get the power washer out. We're gonna go ahead and power wash this son of a gun now that I put some degreaser on it. So let's see how it comes out. I have a good feeling about this coming nice and clean.
That is a wet four wheeler. <sighs> Let's rinse it real quick though. If I can get the hose off my power washer. Here we go. That's all my hose reaches. Oh, well. It looks good. And that's all that matters is if it looks good or not. All right, you don't need to watch me do this. All righty, place your bets. Will it start after I just power wash the living with Jesus out of it? Close. It needs to choke.